that graph, this is 1E and 1F notes. 1E is given the equation and using a transformational approach graph the function. So I'm going to give you an equation here. And you're already going to have to, your job is to graph the function from the equation. First, we're going to have to start by, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about each individual equation and what in the equation makes the graph go left or what in the equation makes the graph go right, which in the, what in the equation makes the Google graph go up or down or reflect. So I'll start off with y equals x, a linear function here. And to make the linear function go up, all you do, put a number at the end. So I'll pick one. This number could be any number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 15, 1 million, that number is anything. It's just, I'm just saying, if you add a number to the parent function, it's going to make the graph go up. We're going to keep going with the absolute value function. Write the absolute value of it. And then if you add plus 1 on the outside, that will make the graph go up 1. And we'll continue it on. Okay, I mysterious magically wrote them all in. Um, the only thing I would like to talk about is the radical. The radical here. You notice the top of the radical sign does not go all the way across the plus one. It just stops at the x. The same thing with that's with a square root and a cube root. Do not continue the top of it all the way through. Um, other thing, I guess, log functions. I would keep when you're saying you're going up or down, keep the x in parentheses for this. Moving on, to make the graph shift down, translate down, it's just for the opposite is going up. So we have y equals x as the parent function, and then subtract 1. And then absolute value, y equals absolute value of x, I want to shift down, I subtract 1. And I will continue this for the rest of it. And voila, magically all written in. Now, to make the graphs go left, I actually got to talk about linear functions. Let's make an absolute value function go left. You actually are going to, inside of the absolute value, you're going to change and subtract. Just get add one. So it's the opposite of what you would think. You would think to make the graph go left, you would subtract, but in this case, you actually add. Whenever you are going left, you add. So we have in a quadratic x put in parentheses and plus one. Close it out and then put on the square. So y equals the quantity of x plus one all squared. That will make the graph of the parent function y equals x squared go move one to the left. And I will fill this in for the rest of Okay, I filled these in. A couple things I would like to point out. Uh, we have square roots. Either make sure that the top of the square root goes, extends all the way across the x plus 1, or, and I would probably put, and I would put it in parentheses, x plus 1 in parentheses. Same thing with the cube root. Make sure it's in parentheses. You notice the log, the parentheses, you have x plus 1, the y. The exponential y equals e to the x plus 1, put that in the x plus 1 in parentheses, and in the rational in the bottom, I would also put the denominator in parentheses. So, move on to moving graphs, shifting graphs to the right. What do you do? Well, you probably guessed it by now. We subtract. So it's exactly like you did for addition, but subtraction. So we have y equals an absolute value of x. Minus minus any number, minus one here. Y equals x or quadratics minus one squared. And I'll go through and fill them all in. Alright, so a couple of things to note with subtracting, similar to addition, I would with the square roots and the cube roots. I will put those in parentheses, the x minus 1s, logs, 
text my response to put that in parentheses. And the rational function. Rational function I would also put in parentheses. Now for reflection. For a graph to reflect across the x-axis, this is across the x-axis only. We're going to multiply the right side by negative 1. So we have y equals multiply the function by negative 1. You just get a negative x. Red. That's a parent function. We have y equals absolute value of negative, or absolute, negative absolute value of x. And I will continue to fill this in. Yeah, so now I have it filled in just with a negative in front. This will reflect it across the x axis. Now we need to learn how to apply these, each and every one of these. So for my first example, for 1e, is we just have to draw the graph of the function. So I have the equation f of x equals the quantity of x minus 1 to the third plus 2. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what transformations are going to be applying to this. Well, first, I guess I, I parent function is cubic. Okay, so I'm thinking cubic. I'll put those actual the parent function points. So negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And if I just draw a general shape of a cubic function, this will hopefully give me an idea of what I'm going to be doing when it comes to the examples. So transformation-wise, let's just subtract 1 on the inside with parentheses. That means I'm going right 1. And on the outside, plus 2, that means I'm going to shift the graph up 2. So I'm going to take this graph, each coordinate, and go right 1 and up 2. So right 1, up 2. 0, 0 got transformed to 1, 2. 1, 1, I'm going to go right 1, up 2. 1, 1 got transformed, it's transformed to 2, 3. And negative 1, negative 1, right 1, up 2. So negative 1, negative 1 gets transformed to 0, 1. And let's draw it in. Shape. And the red is my answer. That's the graph. Next, draw the graph of the function again. So look at parent function. Parent function is, this is a square root or a radical. The transformations that I see here is reflection. There's never a reflection, do it first. So I'll reflect. It looks like inside, underneath, a radical, so that would be left two. And I see this on the outside. Let's subtract one, so that's down one. So I need to reflect first. Then I'm going to go left, then I'm going to go down. Left and down don't matter direction. So I'm going to take a radical function, we have zero, zero. 1, 1, draw the radical function. I reflect this. So when each point gets reflected across the x axis, it would be, so if it's like 1, 1, it's going to get reflected across the x axis. It's going to be same distance on the other side of the x axis. So that's 1, negative 1. 0, 0 stays there. So when it gets reflected, I now have red. Now I need to take each one of these points and shift the left 2 and down 1. So left 1, 2, and down 1. 1, 2, down 1. And there is my graph. So I went left 2, down 1 with a reflection at first. Learn the right target 1F. We're actually taking, using a transformational approach. This is just using our transformations. Left, right, up, down, reflect. We need to write the equation. Now I'm going to be giving you a graph. I'm going to give you a graph, you write, me, you write the equation. So find the equation from the graph. We have what I would do, draw in the parent function. And 
What I do is I just follow one point, the bottom of the V. Zero, zero gets transformed to three, one, negative one. So it looks like I'm going to the right three. One, two, three. And down one. So I need to reflect that into my, I need to look at that and put that into my equations. So my parent function of y equals the absolute value of x. I need to know what does down one do? Well, down one is absolute value of x minus one. That is down one. And now I need to put in right three. So y equals absolute value of x. Right three, right is negative subtraction. So subtract three and then on the other side subtract one. And this is what I'm looking for, the equation of the graph that was given. So on right three, down one. If you have questions, please come next class. We'll be reviewing, and hopefully this will help you.